Hello, this is Will Cooper with SharePoint Smart. Today we're going to talk about charting options for SharePoint Online. This is something that everybody is interested in, and yet there's a lot of obstacles. People aren't quite sure what to do. There is an official platform from Microsoft, which is Power BI, which allows for powerful charting and development capabilities. But unfortunately, there's two major problems with this platform. One is that it's expensive. It costs $10 per month per user. That's $120 per year. And that's not just for developer licenses. That's for anybody in your organization that wants to view those charts in SharePoint Online. That can be quite expensive. The other problem is that it's a developer-oriented platform. You're gonna to have to be writing lots of code and lots doing lots of learning to learn how to do everything you need to do. And if you just want basic charting options, that's not gonna be a good match for you. Today, we're gonna to look at a couple of different kind of options that overcome those obstacles and let you get cool looking charts to visualize your data without having to mess with an additional platform. So with that, let's get SharePoint Smart. Okay, I've got a basic view up, um, nothing complicated at all. We've just got some sales figures for the year, and I just have two columns, one that has the uh, labels, and then one that's got the figures for sales, uh, the total for the month. So as a start, we're just gonna use this data. I should comment, no matter what kind of charting you're doing, you're gonna have to do a step which you would describe as aggregating data. That is to total it up or make an average or put it together in some way to provide it to some kind of charting tool. It isn't enough to just point to a SharePoint list with your raw data. That particular skill and workflow is something that we're gonna cover in another video. Uh, but in any case, we're gonna show you data that's already aggregated, already prepared to use for the chart. Uh, so we're gonna start here with my 2021 sales data. And what we're gonna do is take a look at what SharePoint gives you out of the box. So I've got a modern SharePoint page. Um, and I threw a, uh, a nice looking banner up at the top. And we're gonna take a look at the quick chart web part under the modern web parts. Um, it's really simple and easy to do. So if I go into a page and I click the little plus icon, um, I can scroll through these options and um, I've used it recently. So there it is, but it's just simply called quick chart. And you can see it's got a little arrow and line with it. Um, you just click on that. You can click at the top. Um, I'm just gonna call this chart one. You hit the little pencil icon and you've got two types of charts to choose from. You've got column chart or pie chart. So the first one we'll do is column and it gives me a couple of options. I could manually enter data if I wanted to. Um, that's not a great option. That would be a static chart that never changes. We're not interested in that type of chart. Instead, we want a dynamic chart. We want to point to a SharePoint list so that our chart's going to get updated um, every time we change our information. So I've got 2021 sales there. And then the tool is far enough to know after I've pointed to the list, um, you know, which columns would be applicable for that. So I pick the labels, the month, and within a few seconds, I've got something showing. And then it asks about the sort order. Um, I want it to be sorted uh, according to those labels. So I'm gonna say ascending based on the label and you notice I named them 01, January, 02, February, etc. Um, so pretty easy. If I wanted to have labels on the uh, horizontal axis, vertical axis, I could do that. Now, just to pause for a second, that's it. That's the entirety of the options for this chart. I cannot make any other configuration change. I can't change background color, scale, uh, add borders. Uh, any types of things I want to do, that's it. I, I get what they give me. 
Um, so there's kind of good and bad there. I'm able to get a chart very fast, but um, this is the limit of what is provided. I have to um, have my chart just like this. There is one other type of chart. We'll do that real fast. Um, I'll call that chart two. I'm going to use the same data and this time I'm going to select some options. We're going to get a pie chart. Okay, so there it is 2021 sales again. And then just like before, I pick those two columns and only in a few seconds, I've got a, a chart up there. So these tar charts look nice, but once again, notice there's no other configuration options. Um, so in this specific scenario, that's nice, but I really can't go any further with this. I just have to take what I get. Um, so I can publish this page and Without a doubt, this is the fastest option you could possibly have for charting, but you can only get charts that look just like this. And it would depend on your data being set up like this. So once again, you do have to aggregate the data. That's going to be the case with any kind of charting option that you do. Okay, so that's the SharePoint out of the box, modern web part, the quick chart web part, and that's what you can do with that. Now, we're going to get into something more dynamic, more interesting, and something different than you've probably ever seen before. Uh, we're going to do something which are known as image charts. This is an image chart because we're going to pass a configuration to a server through an image reference. It's going to render the chart outside of SharePoint, but we'll be able to see that inside of our SharePoint list. And this is working with list view column formatting. Um, so first of all, let's take a look at what that is. Uh, if you've never worked with column or view formatting, um, this may be something that's going to be a little bit overwhelming um, because there's a lot of code. And I did mention today we're going to look at some easy options. I'm going to show how it can be easy to you. What this what the this does? It's called. Um, JSON formatting. It's a special JavaScript object no notation and it tells SharePoint how to take data and render it in any way that I want, especially in a visual way. And there's a whole um, reference I'll provide in the links um, that describes how, that you, how you could do this, but specifically we're going to focus on charting today. Um, so all of this wrapper code helps SharePoint know what's going to be rendered on the page. Um, so this is what you're going to be sticking in a SharePoint. Um, pretty daunting, I know. Um, I'm going to show you that we have a tool that you can use to produce this code and you can do some copy and paste and that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Now the key part about this code is a image reference that's right in the middle of it and this is where all the magic happens. There's a website I'll show you. It's called quickchart.io and we're passing that website a reference with many different parameters and it tells that site what we want our chart to look like. Um, here's another one. We've got a, um, a different kind of codes. So you can see that they're very similar um, and this is what we're going to paste in. Okay, so that probably has you scratching your head. I'd be pretty amazed if that's something that looks familiar to you. Now, just like before, we need to have some aggregate data. It's going to be in a different format than what we saw before, but we have some common limited values. Um, what you see here is 12 comma separated values in one record and one field, which I've called data set one. And what we've got here, if you check the links under the video, is a configurator, if you will. It's a tool that helps us build up some code for this. And I can see a preview of what this looks like on the page. If anybody who's used JS Fiddle or something like that, you might recognize this. So if I go in here, it's going to automatically serve up code for me and I can copy and paste that. So I'm going to change this to blue bars and I see a preview in here and rather than you having to write that nasty nasty code that I just showed you you can actually just hit that copy button and I can go back to SharePoint and I've got some views set up so 
we're going to go to a view I made called test bar. And what you want to do is go to format the view. Okay, so it gives you some options. We want advanced mode. Okay, I've got that in my copy paste queue, so I'm just going to do select all and then paste. And I don't need to examine it or look at anything or anything like that. So I'm going to hit save. And what's going on there is that's an actually an, an image that's being rendered from the quick chart server. Um, you notice if I right click on it, it says save image as. Um, instead of it being rendered here locally with JavaScript and HTML and CSS, it's actually passing all that being served back to us. Um, but it's dynamic and it'll change according to those codes. Um, so that's really cool. Okay, so there's our bar chart. We have that working. Let's go and do some more of them. Okay, we want a column one. Again, it's just reading off of that. So in this tool, it says data set one. And the reason we have that code right, right is that I have this field that says data set fields and I put in data set one that matches my column name data set one. So you could have a different column name. You just change that. And let's do column chart. Okay, there's column chart just for fun. Let's make this one red. All right. So I already know what it's going to look like even before I paste it. So that's the cool part. I can fiddle around with that, get it to do whatever I want. Um, let's do vertical labels. Notice those things changed. I'm going to just click that green button to copy the code. And we want that in our column. So I'll do format the view. Don't do edit the view. That'll take you somewhere different. Okay. Click on advanced mode. Select all, paste, save. Boom. All right. So there's an image. You can see it's exactly what we saw in the configurator tool. Let's do a couple more of them. Okay. So we want a line chart as well. Um, notice it's all based on the same list data. These are just different views I'm making this list. Now you may notice we've got some other ones and I don't want to get too complicated with this video, but you can imagine you might want to do a stacked bar or multi-line or something like that. And that's the reason for these different fields. Okay. So let's do the line chart. So I'm going to scroll up here. I'm going to pick line and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a different size. I'm going to make it a little taller, change that to 600. Um, just give it a little more height. Um, let's do a different color. Let's make this one. I don't know. Let's do lime green. Sure. Why not? And, uh, make it a thicker line too. Okay. There we go. And, uh, maybe a different title. Okay. Um, I'll call it limes there, change the title. Okay. So that code's rewritten for me. I just have to grab it, come over here, format the view, advance and paste. Okay. So now we're actually having a lot more configuration options, a lot more control. I can do a lot of things to get this to look however I wanted to and uh, just with some copy and paste. Okay. Um, and we've got one more fun one to do. We're going to do pie chart. Okay. So let's go to the pie chart. There's the pie chart. Okay. And let's go ahead and grab that code. Just doing format the current view. Paste it in, save, there you go. And again, what's so cool about this, even though it's coming as an image, that's dynamic. When that list data gets changed, the image that's served up is also going to change. So um, this is a really interesting and different approach to doing charting in SharePoint Online. Now you can take these views and you can render them out to modern pages. So uh, if you want to have a banner up above or something like that, usually this is going to take up a lot of space. So I'd recommend having kind of one per page, that type of thing. Now, what is interesting is really you just need one row of data. So it feels a bit silly, but for my chart, all I need is that single row of data and I'm all set. So 
this will be linked under the description. This is a tool I put together. It will be updated uh, with different options. You can play around with this. But basically, whatever you see in that preview is what's going to be in there. What you need to do is update the data labels, um, up, you know, and update uh, these fields down here about your data. You can even load random data. You see that'll change like that. Um, all kinds of different options for you. And just to tell you a little bit more about this, as I say, um, this is relying on a service uh, from a website called quickchart.io. As long as you're not rendering a chart more than once a second, you're good to go. They do have a subscription plan for more high volume usage. And their tool relies on an open source platform, which is chart.js. Um, this is the most popular open source charting platform for JavaScript. Um, so it's very cool. So we're relying on some of that technology. Now, one thing we didn't get into that I want to cover in another video is there's yet another way you can do charting in SharePoint Online, and that's using Excel, believe it or not. There is a special tool, uh, which is um, referred to as the um, uh, <laughs> file viewer web part. It didn't come to me right away. And you can actually look at an Excel chart in the browser from SharePoint Online. We're going to cover that in another video. So that's what I wanted to show you today, some interesting and easy charting options for SharePoint Online. So we've got more to cover, but that covers um, what I wanted to show you for our main presentation today. Okay, so once again, uh, what we're trying to look for are different options that are going to help you get some visual charts. We want to be able to do that quickly and easily. I will provide links if you look under the video to uh, the different key tools and some references uh, for some of the things I mentioned today. And we're going to cover in other videos um, some key skills uh, in terms of aggregating data. You do need to learn some workflow. You need to ha have a dynamic way to take your source data and package it all up and put it into a nice container so that you can uh, put it out in a single line of information like what I showed. And we will show how you can even do charts using Excel and a little bit of workflow by pa passing data to a workbook and using the file viewer web part. Um, so lots of neat ideas, some new, interesting, dynamic approaches to putting together charts and serving them up in SharePoint Online without having to use Power BI. Thank you very much, and I hope that you found that interesting and you'll have some cool charts in your site soon.